Welcome back to another episode of Light Beer, Dark Money. I'm Sean Noble. Chris is out of town, but today's guest is a friend of mine, Nikki Metzger. She's the owner, founder of Body in Scottsdale. It's a fitness studio. How would you describe it? I would say it's a high intensity strength and conditioning gym. Yeah. It's, and and it's, I'm pumped to be here with you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for taking the time. Uh, Body is a place that I've been going to since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, it's been great. Uh, I was introduced to Body uh, by friends of ours when you when you were doing stuff outside yes. in the parking lot. And concrete jungle. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was intense. Um, you know, I have a my as listeners know, and I have a background in bar. I was I have been a bar instructor for the last five or so years. Um, which is not normal, you know, guys are not typically bar instructors, but you know, uh, uh, not fun I'm, being normal, you know, <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> I, but I love it. And, uh, and I'm, and I'm a big fan. I, it wasn't until I went to my first bar class in 2013 that I realized that I was a group fitness kind of guy. Yeah, that, absolutely. That's, that was the thing that was missing. So and bar is a whole other ball game too. When I was in Chicago, I taught bar and I used to take it a lot because I grew up with a dance background. Yeah, don't be fooled by yeah. those little <laughs> tiny pulses and movements. Right, right. Um, you know, obviously you had to go through the pandemic because I, that's how I got introduced to you guys. Um, are, have you been a part of? Do you have a group of studio owners that you collaborate with? Do you? Were there people that you were talking to that through that time? And I mean, talk a little bit about getting through that. We've, yeah. we talk, we have talked on this podcast a lot about the pandemic in part because we started the podcast, um, as you know, in the ends coming yeah. to the end of the pandemic. Um, so it, it was a, obviously it changed a lot of people's lives for better and for worse. And, Absolutely. and so how did you get through it? Yeah. So I, there, we definitely did not have a group and there's still not a group of, I guess, business owners and fitness people together. Maybe I guess that'd be really helpful. Um, however, I do feel like a lot of, you know, it was harder for us because pre-pandemic, we had 100 people classes where other gyms, like it was normal for them to still have like 15, 20 people right. in a class. So for them, it was a little bit easier, I feel, going into that transition of like how to social distance and keeping your classes. Where, I mean, obviously, it still affected every business, but not as much of an impact for us to be like, there's no way we are allowed to have 100 people in a class. Right. Um, or even it was tough because I feel like a lot of those other gyms, a lot of our competition, we're still never shutting down. We're still getting away with doing a lot of things. And for us, we have too many eyes on us to even try to get away with doing something. Right. You know what I right. mean? Not even saying that you would want to, but at that point, you want, obviously, your business to keep being successful. Um, so for us, I felt it a little like frustrating because we really had to follow those rules. We had taped out boxes. We had very like no shared equipment, um, all of that, where we have a lot of our um, other gyms and competition that actually became more successful during mm -hmm. the pandemic. And we had members that like went to them and Hey, if I was in their shoes, no saying that I wouldn't have done the, the same thing. Right. Um, but yeah, so I felt kind of a little isolated a little bit in that situation because we're like, Oh, like I wish we could be getting away with doing something or like they're, they're actually, the business has never been better in the pandemic. So it was right. a little bit different for us. I feel. Well, I can imagine it was frustrating. I mean, I, <clears throat> because one, there was, there was a lot of, it, it, I mean, in hindsight is 2020, obviously, but it just, you look back and think of some of the things. And, and as it turns out, you know, I got very frustrated with the way things were being handled. And then as things got better here in Arizona and in other places, I started looking to, to like California or New York. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's totally, or DC. You spend, you know, oh, I yeah. have a lot of experience with DC. It, it was years. I, we had, you know, a close friend of ours um, who has bar studios back there. Um, and, you know, they shut down and it was more than a year. They could oh, not yeah. literally have anybody in person. No. It was just nuts. Yeah, I felt very lucky, I feel, to be in Arizona during that time. Um, I don't know if you kind of feel that same way or if Absolutely. that's kind of what you're meaning. Yeah, I, like, mean, I feel like when you're looking around anywhere else, you're like, oh, 
Like, obviously this is not great for anybody, but I would rather be here than a lot of places because I felt like at least we were, even though it was middle of the summer in July, we were still able to go and like get some workouts in right. outside. And, um, you know, we were able to open up sooner and like be back inside with more like strict rules and all of that stuff. So, and not even in a business standpoint, but I was thinking of if I was still living, I at least to live in Chicago for a long time. If I was still trapped in like my little mini apartment, like being cold or at whatever any points that would be like, that would be so much worse than being here. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, I remember teaching on zoom, teaching bar during the pandemic for our friend Kate, who had studios out in DC area. And, you know, we would talk with the clients on occasion before and after classes. And, and you could tell that, I mean, they were literally just stuck inside yeah, and not doing anything. I know. And it just, you know, it's heartbreaking, um, in a lot of ways. The, um, I mean, I, I, I got to believe that you were watching with interest the whole back and forth between Tom Hatton at Mountainside Fitness oh, yeah. and the governor in those lawsuits. And <laughs> yeah, and that was actually great. I was like, awesome. Because I'm like, I'm not as powerful as him to be like standing up and doing this. But I was like, whatever he's doing is hopefully going to help <laughs> right. all of us. So yeah, that was really great. I feel like it was just such a wild like whirlwind of a time because I felt like I was constantly, especially because it was like my business. So everyone's looking to me for what are we doing? What are the answers? And so I felt like I was constantly like every week, like making like a new business, like now we're online, we're on zoom. And then now we're in the park. Now we're getting some turf and putting it on the parking lot. Now we're inside for a little bit, like in these boxes. So I felt like I was constantly for that like year, like reimagining my business and like recreating a business over right. and over. Right. Wow. Yeah. That hadn't even thought about that. Part when really I was like, I just want to like take a nap, but everyone's asked, looking to, to me for, for answers. Yeah. <laughs> so I've got to figure this out. Well, it certainly wouldn't have been anything that you would have expected when you, cause you've been open for how long? When did you open? Um, January, 2014. Okay. And literally we, we've been very lucky since we've opened. It was just a straight line, like up, like everything was boom, 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 boom right up into the pandemic was like, Oh my God, this is amazing. And then it was like, this, this sucks. Like you literally feel like think something's just being taken away from you yeah. for something you didn't do. Right. And that's, what's really frustrating when you're, I always, I mean, we, we've been very lucky to be still doing very well, but it's still nowhere where we were before the pandemic. And it's just one of those things. Yes. There's a lot more fitness competition out there. So I do feel like, you know, we could have probably lost members to other places in general, just because they might find a place that they like more. And Hey, that's totally fine with right. me. Um, but it is one of those things where you wonder, you're like, if this didn't happen, like where you'd be sitting with everything. Yeah, no question. It's interesting when you look at like the, what was happening around, you know, the, what happened with the federal government and, you know, the, the bailouts and restaurants got a lot. There's just all kinds of, you know, who had the interest groups, like liquor stores are, essential. Yeah. I, mean, that's right. just, I still haven't quite figured that out. Um, and so I think that there's some things that people need to write. Okay. Let's rethink how this, cause it's, if fitness is in a situation like a pandemic, if yeah. fitness is not considered essential, that's insane no, because absolutely. we know now that, you know, being fit was a huge benefit of a, you know, being healthy. against yeah. uh, events, the virus. And but I also, you know, there was some effort because I remember being, you know, on, on emails and that kind of thing with the bar community of, you know, trying to get some relief for studio owners or fitness studios and workout and gyms, that kind of thing, um, who had to close. Mm -hmm. And that never went anywhere. Yeah. You know, so you had these huge bailouts for all these other industries, fitness industry. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. It just felt yeah. very, like, unfair. You know? <laughs> right. Very frustrating. And I don't, I, I guess it's, I don't really understand why, I mean, and maybe it's just because restaurants have been around for so much longer than fitness studios yeah. and, and gyms, that kind of thing, that there is a pretty robust lobby, for yeah. lack of a better way to put it, for those types of business owners. Um, and that's not the case for the fitness world. And I think it's, you know, I, I really don't know what to chalk it up to, except that it just must be a, a matter of of time that just length of existence yeah right absolutely is that something that maybe you should do 
You know, I never really thought about it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should. <laughs> Somebody's got to start. Someone's got to do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> so obviously the pandemic was, you know, you a lot of high pressure. So the quite next question I have for you, which kind of leads into that, is what what do you do to decompress? I mean, what is your what is how do you escape from the pressures? Yeah, of it's being tough a because owner? again, like you know, being a business owner, it is twenty four seven, and I think a lot of people at Body think like, oh, if Nikki's not teaching anymore, well, she's just prancing around. I'm like, actually, no, I'm sitting on my butt a lot more because I have a lot more like back end work, computer work, other things like that. And I'm a very like ADHD mind. I'm also a person who gets very inspired at night. So I can find myself working way too much on little things, even if I'm enjoying it. So um, I do have to find those things to kind of chill. I'm also a mom too. So I have my little five-year-old little crazy kiddo. So you can understand that. Um, so for me, it's just taking time to like go on walks, listen to different podcasts, to read books. Like that's definitely a good one just to kind of get my mind, um, off of thinking things, but also still being inspired or interested in something. And then lately I've been picking up going to pole dancing classes, yeah. which has been so fun. So, um, again, I came with, from a dance background, not a pole dancing background, <laughs> but I grew up dancing, even studied dance in college, um, for my first few years. And um, so, yeah, I've been doing that and it's just like, it's really a great upper body workout and core workout and it's just a fun way to dance and challenge yourself. So that's been like, when I go to that, I think I feel like it's the only time I think about nothing. Right. Yeah. Do something that's just empowering you. Yeah. You can be totally focused totally. on Totally. And I feel like it's just like, like a girl power place where everyone's just like, you do a trick and everyone's like, yeah. And yeah. it's just like really fun. Well, and that's important. It's important to find something that, <clears throat> where you where you feel like you can be just you like when I like when I take bar yeah I feel like because I'm an instructor yeah I'm being watched and I'm sure you go through the same if you go take a body class yeah and again it's people like, are I, just yes watching so it's like I love right? being the body but it's not completely my free zone I'm also in there like oh my god there's a spider web over there I need to like clean that <laughs> spider web or I'm like oh this like needs to be fixed or I need to order more mini bands or you know right. I'm always thinking of something and I'm also kind of a person who is a little bit more introverted than people would think. So like for me too, it's like sometimes when I go to body, I just kind of want to be like, I don't want to talk really like right. if I'm in my workout, like type of thing. So yeah. yeah, like obviously body is like my happy place and you know, I do it like four or five times a week. Um, but it isn't a fullest like escape. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and they, we all have, and I think wonder if it's this true because I am, and Alyssa's this way, uh, my wife, she, she was what got me into bar and she's been, she's a bar instructor. We're, we're both not super extroverts and, yeah. but you put the mic on and it's like, yes, you know, boom. Yeah. So. I always describe myself as an outgoing introvert. Like <laughs> people would see me in like a body class and I'm like, but that's almost like not a character, but I'm like, that is actually one of my, that's like my favorite me. Like I love like being up in front of people. I love doing all of that stuff, but kind of getting more in those like one-on-one conversations make me nervous. It's actually something I really want to kind of work on more like in life, even like doing these podcasts. Like, could you ask me to be on it? I'm like, Oh my God, I'm so nervous to go do that. <laughs> so yeah, it's interesting. That's fascinating. What, uh, what would you do differently? Well, before we get there, let me, let me go. Cause we're this, we have the, what I call the three F's, the okay. faith, free enterprise and free markets. <laughs> But I also, I like to add fitness to it mm-hmm. a lot because I've been, you know, I've gone to Dave Asprey's biohacking conference a couple of times and I try to, you know, I'm getting old and I need to live no a long nonsense. time because I have young kids. Yes. Um, so there's, I have a longevity is a, a big thing. And so there's, for me, I've, you know, the daily stuff that you do, what kind of stuff do you, what's your daily routine that you know, just get you both mentally and help and physically prepared to go. Yeah. Well, my child still sleeps on top of me every single night and he's five. <laughs> so so usually happens. my morning starts usually with a good little cuddle because, you know, that's how it always starts. And I actually love that. That's my favorite, favorite thing about my mornings is just like cuddling, chilling with him. Um, actually, probably previous to that, I also have an alarm that goes off extra early to see if there was any fires at the gym. And then I go back to bed for a second. And maybe that's something that I should change. And maybe that's not the healthiest thing to even have to worry about it. If the fire happens, they'll call you. Exactly. But I think it is something that mentally I'm like, okay, this alarm goes off. I look at my phone. I like, okay, go back to sleep. But like, <laughs> like you know, lets me know, like I can just like ease into my day a little bit more. Um, but yeah, pretty much 
pretty much in the mornings I'm more like I get up, kind of write my to-do list for the day just so that I don't like be thinking about it. And again, like being like ADHD, like I kind of need to have like a little bit of a plan. Um, but then it's more just like spending time with the kiddo in the morning, getting him ready for school. Then we drop him off um, and then we go take a body class, my husband and I. So we kind of like, that's how we start our day. Um, it's kind of, yes, yeah, family time, bring the kid, get our workout in. And then from there is when I start like tackling anything on my to-do list. But like I said, I can get very much where I'm like working on something for too long. So I really have made sure that I will get in um, you know, take some time, like, oh, I've been working for a couple hours, let's go get outside, like, go on a walk. If it's too hot in the summer, maybe do a little stretch, do a little foam rolling, something like that, and then get back to work on kind of, like, the top things that need to be done. That's something I've also had to be better at, too, is what is the priority for the day, and what are just bonuses if I get done for the day, and what should I maybe just stop and make sure I'm fitting in these other, like, fun things. Yeah, yeah, totally. But, yeah, I'm not, like, a, like, like I love – journaling occasionally I love doing you know I, I don't always but I don't always like at this time I wake up in right. a journal or this time I listen to something it's kind of just depends like day by day of like what I'm doing well, I, I wish think, I had more of something inspiring to yeah, share and and I think that you know there are people who are very structured and people are like and and a lot of people that do this and they say you got to do this to do, do boom boom yeah I'm like yeah you don't have kids yeah exactly <laughs> right yeah it's just totally dependent yeah, on Yeah, I feel like, yeah, I, I think before, right before, or maybe it was even when I was, like, pregnant, I was reading that, um, I don't know if you've heard about, like, the Miracle Morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, like, read that. I was like, yes, this is, like, great. And I feel like it was, but it was like, as soon as I had that kid, I was like, yeah, this Miracle Morning is not working. Not so much a miracle. Yeah, <laughs> but you can take little bits of all those things that, you know, yeah. have worked and you've learned um, and, you know, just make make it work. Right. What, uh, if you were to go back and open body, so two questions related to opening body, what would you do different looking back now? And then what the follow on to that is, what would it be like opening it now? Yeah. Honestly, going back, I would do absolutely nothing different. Mm. Literally oh. people. Yeah. People have asked that. Honestly, I feel like it was just, again, um, you know, my husband and I moved here from Chicago, we did not know a single person when we like signed the lease and opened it. We were only here for a month. So we were kind of getting it ready. It, like, it sounds insane. Like going back to it now, I'd be like, I would never move somewhere and like in a month, like not knowing someone and open a business. Like that's what the heck. And again, it's like, I did have a good like following and everything in Chicago. And, but I, when I came here, I was like, ah, huh, do I teach at other gyms, build my name and, you know, build a reputation that way. But for years I've been like preparing to open up my business and do this. And I just felt like, you know what, I'm just going to do it. And I have no choice but to make this work. Um, and it was just kind of like a wild, fun ride from there. Right. You know, I taught every single class. I had no voice. It was just, it was tiring. But like, again, I didn't have kids. I was in my 20s. So it was just so much fun. And I feel like, again, maybe if I, if it wasn't like if we had more struggles and growing pains to which we were very, very lucky, like it was pretty much just like pretty successful from the beginning. And, and maybe I would have thought about things differently, but overall, like when I look back at it, I'm like, I love the whole ride of it. But going into now, I think it's a totally different ball game. So again, like when I started body, social media wasn't what it is now. Right. So yes, we had Facebook, but it wasn't the same. Even there was Instagram, but it was like when you posted like your trendy picture of your coffee and that's all it was, <laughs> right. you know, that stories, nothing else. Um, so I feel like, and again, I feel like there's a lot more competition in general. Yeah. So I feel like now I would have to have a lot more strategic approach when it comes to my marketing and how am I getting this out there and how am I looking different? Um, so I feel like now I feel like it would just be different of just having to be a little bit more strategic, but also I think there is a little bit of luck for like, not luck or make it a little easier for some new businesses that do open because of social media, right. because they automatically have people sharing you up. Like everyone is on their phones all the time. You're seeing more new gyms pop up and, and whatnot. But maybe I had like less stress at that point because it didn't feel like that type of pressure like it does now yeah. on a social media standpoint. So I think, yeah, I feel like that would just, I don't know. Now I'm like, I would not want to open a gym. <laughs> like, I don't yeah, know. I, well, I, I mean, because Alyssa had the bar method for yeah. a few years and closed it. Literally, she got out of that lease 
the two weeks before the pandemic hit. That's a blessing right there. Which was right amazing. There. Yes. Um, but, you know, I, we always thought, oh, Scott's, you know, Arcadia, Scottsdale, great place for a bar method. Probably would have been more successful had it been 10 years earlier. Yeah. You know, it was just because she opened it in 2006, the end of 2016. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, because I think the fitness world has evolved and people are wanting more and more choices. Yeah. So if, mm-hmm. if you're one mode, you know, that's that's a more challenging yeah. thing than having something like what you have, which is you have a couple different class types, but you have a lot of different exercises within those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For it's, sure. it's a very different type of, of deal. Um, so, yeah, opening today, I just, it is such a competitive marketplace yeah, it definitely um, is for sure crazy. like yeah i always think about that now i'm like oh if we like could we ever do it again like what we did with potty <laughs> i'm like ah, i'm not gonna find out yeah you know, <laughs> I'm not gonna test that there yeah so what what's the hardest thing that you've ever had to do as a business owner i mean obviously like covid like that was obviously very hard however i will give you the blessings that was good from that um i would say there was a lot of things I used to worry about before. What if a trainer left? What if um, a new gym opened? What if, you know, like, what if we lost all these members? All of that stuff happened to me, yeah. like, during that time. <laughs> and you know what? I was fine. And, you know, so I feel like that, just that stress and anxiety, like, those are the things that were, yes, it was so hard going through that. Um, do I wish that happened? No. But I do think there's a few of those good things that I learned that, hey, you, everything will be okay. You'll figure it out. Everything's figure outable. Like everything will be fine and, and whatnot. So that was my worst thing, but also less thing. Best thing. Um, I think my other thing is when I started body, I didn't even, I don't even know if I had a dream of it to be like what it is today. Or if I did, I didn't think it would be like as soon as what it was. And so I was so okay with it just kind of being like, me and like maybe another trainer and just kind of being like a smaller like place and and whatnot and now it's like I have a lot of employees and so my goal in life was never to manage a lot of employees and I care way too much and I mean maybe in a good like it's a good thing That's good. but yeah. I but I do I just like I like I feel like I just like I worry about everyone I worry about all my trainers I want to keep everyone happy all the time I want to like you know, obviously, again, those are good things, but it's something that I think is almost like stressful for me. I'm like, I want them to have like my success, but how do I do that? Or like, you know, it's, I think that is the thing is I care so much about all of my employees, like to a fault, like that it's hard on me. Yeah. No, I, well, that's interesting that you say, cause I, I have had probably, and that's, it's not a positive, but a, a negative on my side of being a business owner is that I probably haven't cared enough. Yeah. Um, and it's because I think, uh, well, I did rely on Alyssa to run the business. We, we ran a political consulting firm together for many years. And I, and I should say I didn't run it. She ran it. But so I was really focused on the, the work, but we at, at our height, we had 30 employees. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't know that I could have told you anything about any of them, yeah. which I is think, really sad when I look back I on it. I think it's a little bit of both, because um, the gym I managed in Chicago, I had a lot, too, and they were kind of more of the ones that came and go, maybe they taught other studios or whatever, and, you know, like, the body trainers, for example, it's like, they come in, it's like the one place they teach, it's whatever, they become, like, really good friends of mine, almost like best friends, so it's mm-hmm. like, if they do do different journeys or whatnot, I feel like that's kind of hard, where there are, are points where I'm like, as... I get older and as I hire on more people, it almost makes me be like, wait, should I take more of a step back on like the friendship part of it and be like a little less of that? I mean, I wouldn't have traded anything for now, but it is kind of things that that is hard for me that I kind of have to figure out how to like, you know, do it, do it all. And I think I am a very easy boss to like work for and I, I pride myself on that. But also I think it is because I just like, People know I care a lot. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, I mean, I, I have to compliment you. We, we've been very impressed with your trainers. Um, you have a, a great team. Thank you. It is impressive. And, I, and so it did actually made me think, well, so what are you doing to get such great talent? I mean, all the people that we've been in touch with yeah. and, and worked out with have been fantastic. Um, I mean, do you have a method 
Is there a- most of it is a good gut feeling? I don't. I don't even care if someone um, has been training for a long time. I care if they want to learn. So most people come are newer trainers, but that's like I can mold them to teach like right. the body way, and I just see that they have a good heart, a good personality. Like people are gonna like them, and they want to learn. They're eager to learn. So for me. And like, again, too, because I, like my first boss and my first mentor took a big chance on me. And so I always want to be that person that like, I don't care if you have this amazing resume. There's a lot of really smart trainers out there that would be horrible group fitness instructors. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, just yeah. because they know all the science and everything like that, they could be like maybe a good trainer and could apply all that. But to be an actual group fitness instructor, I feel like is totally different. Um, and for me, I think it's always been a gut feeling or even I've been like, Someone will come up to me or I'll see them and be like, I feel like they would be like a really good trainer. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. Because it, yeah, I, I get that. The, uh, and mentoring I think has been because I, I wouldn't be where I am if it weren't for people who took me under their wing early in my career. Uh, and you know, I mean my first boss, uh, in politics, well, second, I guess, was a guy who was running for Congress. He didn't, you know, he, he didn't really have much of a chance, yeah. according to conventional wisdom. And he needed a campaign manager, and I didn't have a lot of experience, but I was willing to work my ass off, and yeah. he took a and chance. You probably on me. learned so much more oh in that gosh. experience than if you would have been on like another team uh, that was already kind of like 100%. had their, you know. Yeah, it was amazing, and then he won. Yeah, that's... <laughs> totally changed my life. <laughs> it's because of you and your no, campaign. I definitely was not because of you. <laughs> yeah, no, but I think, I think yeah, the men, like, I feel like that's something I really do enjoy, though, is, like, the like giving people a chance, like, mm-hmm. even if they don't have, like, all the right credentials to start with. I, that's something that's really important to me and something I want to continue to do with body of maybe even if it is eventually a more of, like, a, like a more intense mentorship program that we offer, even if we're not giving people jobs right away, right. a way to learn. Well, talk a little bit about, I mean, body has, you you know, since the pandemic and you've rebuilt and, you know, things seem to be going well. It's always easy for people from the outside to yeah. guess. No, so. I'm very happy. <laughs> you know, like I said, like, like it's not like it was before, but I'm very happy where we're at. Yeah. So, but you have, you've recently announced some, some expansion. Yeah. Well, t- talk to us about Yeah. That. So we're actually taking over more space within the building. Um, right now we have like a big downstairs stairs main studio and then upstairs is the boxing room, but it's very small up there. Have you ever taken a boxing I class haven't. up there? Yeah. I feel like it's just not as inviting, you know, and it's small, but people love the boxing program and it is solid. Like it's a really good program. We just don't have a good space for it. So I think bringing it downstairs in this new space will be great. And then we're also going to be adding in more specialized programs. So, you know, they'll be like that more. One, uh, not one-on-one, but small group type training. Like, hey, maybe you're going to join this four to six week program. Um, you know, it's all focused on like barbells and Olympic lifts or this four to six week program is all for kids or, you know, or yeah. we're just going to be working on like growing a booty, you know, <laughs> like different programs that we're going to try and cycle through for this next year of kind of making it like our, our lab, um, having yoga, recovery, all that kind of stuff going on in there. Awesome. So I'm just excited to add that um, for the members, kind of make it more of that, like one stop shop, little home for people. That's fantastic. Very cool. What, uh, so you, we were just talking about, I kind of got us off on the, on the, uh, what's going on with the studio, but going back to your employment, you know, the, you're being a boss, you know, you, you hire and, and employ, you know, some Gen Zers, maybe a couple, uh, millennials, uh, you're, you're a millennial, yeah. right? Um, what, what advice do you have for people, uh, like me on employing Gen Z's? Yeah. Like just the, yeah. Cause every, we're Cause very I, different. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I got to think about it this night. I could be totally wrong as well. Um, but I feel like our generations were definitely more, it is more just like it is that like grind mentality, that like hustle mentality. And almost like, oh, I get a badge of honor for like grinding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Where I do feel like millennials or, or the Gen Z are a little bit more thinking more of like, I feel like you see them drinking less than like millennials. Um, you, um, they seem like they want more of that work-life balance. They want to 
experience. They want community. They want a lot of that kind of things. And I could be totally wrong, but do you kind of agree with me yeah. um, on that? So I feel like it is a little bit of a different like approach. And I feel like for me, I went in and I was like, I'll work as much as I can. I'll work for free. I'll do this, like blah, 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 blah. And again, I'm sure there's still people that would want to do something like that, that they're passionate for. But I think there's a little bit, it's a little bit different. So coming from our generation where we might look at it like laziness or maybe something that we're like, they think they think things should be handed to them right. or things should be easier. I try to maybe look at it like, well, are they just trying to have a healthier like life balance? Are they lazy or are they lazy? I right, don't really right. know. So again, I feel like a lot of it is just person by person. I mean, everyone can be different, um, but like just maybe trusting the right people that you're hiring, but also, I don't know, just having a different understanding. I guess I don't really know. I feel like it's going to be different now in these next few years if, if I have like other trainers come in that are even younger than yeah. these current ones um, will be kind of interesting. Yeah. How, I, what, do you, what do you think on that? Well, I, you know, cause I was, uh, I was very much a grinder. I, you know, I was broadcasting major thinking I was going to be in the news, yeah. you know, ended up in politics kind of a sideways uh, entry but because I was willing to just like work my ass off. I mean, yeah. my first job in politics, I was the assistant campaign manager for a guy who was running for Congress. Uh, he was a state senator, a guy named Matt Salmon. Some some people, our listeners will know. Um, and, but I was making 250 bucks a month and I was working like 40 hours right. a week. And it was one of three jobs that I yeah, had at the time. Exactly. And, and I was just, you know, for me, it was just grind. And then going to work for Shadig as his campaign manager, you know, making a thousand bucks a month. But working 80 hours a week. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would literally, I just, one of the stories I tell young people is like, I would leave the campaign office and stop at Circle K on my way home to pick up the next day's paper because yeah. it was how late it was. It was yeah, 2 o'clock yeah. in the morning, you know, so I could know what the news was I that I was going to wake up at 6 o'clock to, right? Um, so for me, it w it's been very much the grind and work hard and do things for free. And so the entitlement yeah, that I feel like some of the Gen Zers have. It's like, you know, no, it can be oh, I just want, I want to be the business owner now. It's I feel like, like my grandpa being like, I walked up <laughs> the hill both ways in the snow, right. you know, and that's not how I feel now too. I'm like, this, like, you want to be this successful? Like, this is what I had to do, but yeah, I have no idea. Like, I really, I guess I don't know. But yeah, I, I, and I, and it, you look, know, there's some young guys that that I work and and women that I work with that are very smart and you know smarter than me, so they don't have to do the kind of grind that I did probably. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have always been a hard worker. I'm not the smartest guy in the world. So, um, it, you know, there's just different skill sets and, and there is, you know, I think the way society is moving, and this is true of a lot of different, um, fields is that efficiency is, is way more important than just the grind. Yeah. Um, you know, so being able to get in and, and how do I get this done and can I get this done in two hours rather than eight? I mean, is a 40 hour work week just because you work 40 hours? Yes. Did you actually work 40 exactly. hours? Exactly. Yeah. Know? No, I think, yeah, that efficiency of like what can you get done and whatnot. I will add something kind of to this too, which is more related to the fitness industry. But I think also too, when you hire, like now all of a sudden being a trainer, it's like being like a celebrity or this like Instagram star or before where, you know, like when you first got into training, a lot of people got into it because they love training and they love teaching where now I feel like it's a totally different ball game. Right. So I think that's another thing too, um, for me probably in the future and anyone in the fitness industry hiring like a Gen Z, it's like, Am I also trying to make you like a, a celebrity or, you know, or like, <laughs> or are you going to care more about that than actually teaching your classes? Um, which I guess to each their own. I know a lot of people can make a lot of money on Instagram and whatnot. This sounds too, too exhausting for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, 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 but to be a good trainer, you got to be a good trainer. You gotta exactly. Put, you got to put the work in. For you know? sure. Absolutely. Yeah, no question. What is the future of fitness? Um, as you look at it, I mean, you have dipped your toes because you were yeah. a tonal instructor yeah. for people who don't know tonal is a at home workout machine. Um, you can take Nikki's classes now. Yeah. They're still on the, they, they are. the archive. Um, so, so that's, that was an at home push. Yeah. Obviously the p pandemic was big on that. We got a Peloton, you know, whatever. Yeah. So what does fitness look like as you look, you know, over the next hill? Yeah. I feel like again, a lot of those things, like again, you saw that, that at home trend happen and everything was crazy with, 
Peloton and even Tonal. And like, I remember Peloton stock at one point was like, oh my goodness. And that's right when I joined Tonal. And I was like, oh hell yeah, like give me these stock options. <laughs> like if this is where we're going. Um, so, but like also you did see like as the pandemic ended, you saw those people that wanted to be more part of the community. So I think there's, and the, but there's gonna be people that love working at home. And some that used to like working out in person actually discover they like working out at home now. So I still think there's gonna be that online component, um, you know, the same thing that we have going on now. One thing I think is gonna be, and I feel like I'm seeing these pop up more and more, are almost like these like social, social club more, where it's not the stuffy country club, it's not even a lifetime. It's something more for millennials and or not millennials, like Gen Z, younger demographics that feel like it's like their, it's like their whole hangout. It's almost like mm. living in an apartment complex of like that has everything. So I feel like I'm seeing more of those that are like, I don't know, just more of a social club so, type thing. So it becomes a lifestyle. Yeah, exactly. Just a more or less stuffy country club type yeah. vibe. But, I mean, but you're going to have to have a lot of money to like build something out like that, right. obviously, and do it the right way. The people that do have the money to probably do it are more corporate people. So making it like not super corporate, Pe like people want that more, you know, authentic feel. Um, but that's one thing I think we'll kind of see Interesting. more where it's more of like a bougie country club, but for young people. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, Melrose Place, yes. dating myself with yes. all of the stuff. Yeah, you know, we, we all want to hang out, but we're gonna work out. We're gonna go to the pool. Yeah, gonna... then we have like a community workspace, yeah. and then we all collab together. And we like, right. you know, <laughs> that's kind of one thing I definitely see. I also see like, obviously, technology is going to get better and like smarter. Like I'm already seeing like these gyms that like have like electric suits that you're wearing, and I think you're going to see more of that kind of stuff pop up too. Some is going to be a fad and some's going to come and go and, yeah. and whatnot. But um, yeah, I guess I don't, we'll be surprised, I feel like, what we see. I, I feel like I'm always surprised. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, how in the world did I not see that coming? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah, but I get, but I always feel like the co community in real life IRL is what the young people say, right? <laughs> in real life, um, is like always going to be there, and people are always going to want that that community. So, like places like Body and like um, just in person studios, I think will still be a success. But I just think there's going to be a lot more just crazy things that yeah. pop up here and there. Interesting. What uh, What would be something that that people who think they know you don't really know about you? What's an interesting factor? I know. Or... So I guess we already kind of spoke on that, but I would, like I would say like probably people would be like, no way you're introverted or anything like that. You seem like you're the craziest, <laughs> like <laughs> whatnot. So I think people are usually surprised when I'm like, no, I'm actually like pretty introverted in a lot of sides. I did grow up an only child. I feel like I'm just more, yeah, like the right situations, the right people. Like I'm very motivated. I'm motivated by energy. Um, but like I said, like that, you know, one-on-one -on -one stuff makes me nervous, like anything like that. Um, I think people would be surprised to hear that. Um, I don't know. Something else people know. I feel like I'm pretty an open book, like online and everything. I do love I a good peanut butter pickle sandwich. There you go. Uh, I, I'll go with peanut butter and anything but pickles. Have you tried it, though? Well, I guess I, I have to be honest. I probably haven't tried it. And if I did, it must have been... Too long ago to remember. Yeah. So. You can start with just like a little peanut butter on a dill pickle and it doesn't okay. need to be on a full sandwich. And All right. Give that a try. I'll give that a try. <laughs> a gluten free bread. Yes, yeah. exactly. Same <laughs> Toast, here. Toasted. Yes. So, well, thank you for being here. How do people find you, find body? You yeah. Know, what, what are all the. Yeah, the so my personal um, Instagram, it's at Nikki Metzger. And then we have um, the gym at Scott Still Body, B O D I. And then, yeah, we have scottstillbody.com too. That's where you can find us. Awesome. And I highly recommend if you have any desire to get your body moving uh, to go to body and give it a try because it, uh, it's been great for me and Alyssa, and we love it. Thank you. So, well, we love yeah. having you guys. Well, thank <laughs> you. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank Appreciate you so much. It. Thanks, everybody. Take care.